What I'd like to do now is have Jim Grubb come up. And Jim, I'd like to have you join us and bring this to life, our Chief Demonstration Officer. Jim, how you doing? Hi, John. <laughs> All right. You know your assignment should you decide to accept it. All right. You've got to take what I just said and make it understandable with real life examples and technology. OK. Well, you've got to do that. it in 10 minutes. All right, we'll do that. So we're going to talk about transportation today. And we're going okay. to show you an IOE demo. And uh, we've got that with us right here. If you step over here, and we're going to okay. take a look at some of the things that we're doing. And by the way, these apps here are apps that are being implemented with our technology today. So, okay. so um, this is kind of the internet of everything, transforming a segment of the industry. And when you watch this, it isn't one or two applications in silos. It's the applications together across many silos that really give you the power of the transformation. That's right. So we have basically, in this example, connected everything. The trains, the yes. lines, the stations, headquarters and we're getting a lot of data that gives us insight to give us the, the ability to build new kinds of applications. So what you're seeing here is a regional control center. Yes. And over on the right-hand side, I get system alerts. I'm seeing what's happening in my data center. I can see my applications. On the left, I'm seeing video. What I'm going to do now, though, is to go ahead and click on this train, and we can now get data directly from that car, or that train that's running down the track. And you've got to realize that a, uh, a big piece of equipment like a train or an airplane probably does thousands of feeds per second. And you've got to interpret what's the data mean and how do you that's do right. it. But you're going to tie the train to the tracks, to the whole system. That's right. That's okay. right. So we can see the current speed, the allowed speed, the current weight, and fuel. Now, all of this data is used for something called positive train control. Mm -hmm. This is like air traffic control for Like trains. not allowing to collide. What's that? I'm saying like not allowing them to collide. A little yeah, bit yes. <laughs> and so what it does, with positive train control, because we know exactly where every train is, what speed it is at, what they're, what they're limited to, we can actually get 40% more utilization out of the existing tracks. So higher levels of safety and huge increase in the amount of ability to move more trains on the same infrastructure that you have. So what that really says, Jim, you might have a 30 to 40% increase in terms of capacity of the tracks or have okay. savings of that amount, which you can apply back to your core business. That's right. That's this right. is going to occur in every concept of transfer, uh, transportation, from waste management, garbage collection, all the way through the trains. You'll see it literally across the board in what exactly. we do. Exactly. Yeah. As a matter of fact, on the left-hand side here, we're seeing the analytics that are coming from the train fuel efficiency for maintenance purposes and such. You know, in the, there's a, in the Cisco marketplace, there are over 1,400 applications that are available through partners. And this one in particular is uh, from MicroStrategy. So this is a marketplace for transportation? Well, actually, it's for many industries. So okay. these applications that can be implemented and basically just plugged in so that you can build an application for in any, any okay. industry. So we're going to take a look at um, here the uh, passengers, for example, so we can get an idea how many passengers we can, uh, f from the uh, CMX capability, we have the ability to track how many people from their mobile devices are in a given car. Let's go ahead and click here on... So that, tr that changes how you treat customers. It changes how you, perhaps you create extra revenue. It allows you to do the flow of people in and out of the train station. That's part. right. That's okay. right. We're now looking at an, a section of track here. So we can monitor the track. We get a track alerts. We get other data on the uh, right-hand side. Over here on the left-hand side, we're seeing the track control. We're seeing the way station, wayside station status. So this is where we're running fog computing to do local analytics. Again, Matter fog computing. Fact, be in the local capability rather than the big cloud That's right, right. in terms of what occurs in geography. If I click on equipment here, we can actually drill down on one of the devices like the 819 router here. Right. So what we're looking at is a ruggedized router that runs uh, in the pedestal alongside the track. And this runs, in addition to iOS, it runs a Linux image so that you can run these local analytics and processing right out there near the track. So for example, for speed check, which is a very important part of positive train control, we need a very low response time. So we're running yes. the app right out at the edge, um, along with, by the way, an access policy for ACI. So instead of having box-by-box -box configuration, now with ACI, we can have a track configuration. And then any time we change that configuration, it can get deployed to any track. Or so again, it's like a common policy and management all the way that's through. Right, that's okay, right. I got it. Let's take a look at the station here. So here we're looking at the station. We can see which trains are coming and going. We get alerts again. Over here, if I click on this uh, surveillance tab, for example, 
we can use analytics, uh, again, fog computing running, in a, running right in the camera. So using video analytics, we can do things like count things. You can find out how many people are in a cash register line. In this case, we're going to use the video analytics to count the people in the station and maybe direct people to the right exit or to the right, to the right track in the way that it's, they'll get there the quickest. So uh, and another example of fog computing. And then finally, I'm just going to click here on headquarters, and we're seeing the data from our data center. We're looking at application performance. So uh, bringing that data back, uh, we can see what's happening with cloud and the cloud bursting here. We're going to hear more about that, like you said, in Rob's keynote uh, yes. tomorrow. And also, we're doing energy-wise. So, uh, here, for energy-wise, we're not only looking at things like HVAC and uh, power uh, over Ethernet capabilities, but even lighting. There's a really interesting demo in the world of solutions where they're doing uh, power over Ethernet lighting panels that would go into your building that not only allow you to light the building, but also to control it. So you can turn them on and off so without having to add lower anything. cost, everything That's goes right. over a common Internet. That's right. Okay. okay. Now, John, once we have all of this data that we're collecting here, we're just using this here to monitor it, but once we have that data, we want to bring that data into the process. We want to be able to interact with people with that data. So I'm uh, going to, next we're going to show you the new DX80 that you've just been talking about. I'm excited. This is the first time we've demoed uh, this new DX80. It was announced in a press conference a little bit earlier today. Yeah, and, and Rowan, I want it on my desk if I can by the end of the, the, yeah. end of the week. <laughs> Rowan likes to call this the telepresence touch because it's got an Android-based touch screen, of course, uh, full voice capabilities, video capabilities. Apple-like ease of use. And, and ease of use and simplicity. And the best part, it's a typical selling price under $2,000 for a desktop unit like this. So. so you're talking about the voice capability, the display capability, unified communications, telepresence, all coming together. That's right. Now what I'm going to do is use it for a call center application. We're going to have okay. a customer that's going to call from a kiosk in the station that needs help with the ticket. And you can see running on the Android application here, we're getting data about the station and the mm -hmm. train statistics. So I'm going to click on this next call in the queue. And we'll take a call from, uh, looks like, Amy Sanders. So you're seeing this change with call centers around the world in terms of how they're going to begin to interface to their customers. That's right. Hello, Amy. Can I help you with your ticket? Hi. Yeah. Uh, how many people are there in customer service? <laughs> oh, well, we have 10,000. Like 10, we have yeah. a few extra people helping yeah. us today yeah, yeah, with this customer service. But anyway. Um, it, were you having trouble purchasing a ticket? Was it? Uh, yeah. yeah, I was looking at the kiosk and I can't decide whether I should get a round trip ticket or like a multi-city ride. Okay, well, you know what? Let me bring up my application here and we'll take a look at it. I see that you've got a trip uh, in process that you've been uh, uh, trying to purchase here. And uh, so you, you need to get back to Los Angeles, is that what, that's what you're saying? Yeah. yeah, so you actually do need multi-city. So let me click that okay. for you. And we'll go ahead and shall I confirm the purchase for you? Yes, please. All right, I'll go ahead and do that. And would you like me to send that to your iPhone? That would be great. Oh, yeah, okay. I can just click here to send you a confirmation. All right, did you get it? Just sent it there. Uh, yeah, I got it right here. Oh, great, okay. Now, would you like help um, finding the platform or seating on the train? That would be awesome. Oh, okay. Well, let me just bring up the station map so I can see where you're at here. All right. Looks like you're at the uh, kiosk right near the exit. Um, well, let me take a look at the foot traffic here just to let you know what the best way to get to you, the train that you're headed to. So this is CMX showing dwell times and gives us the ability to... So it gives then, where their people are. That's kind right. Kind of an energy right, map, if you right. will, on how to, get, how to avoid it. That's right. Now I'm going to click here on available seats because we have sensors on the train and we now have the ability to see that this car over here on the right. So Amy... So there's no reserve in your seats. So that's it's right. more allowing the customer to give what they that's want. That's right. So Amy, if you go to the platform D, then you ought to be able to find yourself a nice seat. There's a lot of open seats in the car that'll be okay. arriving right there. Okay. All right, Amy, thanks for being a customer and thanks for helping us with our demonstration and all the yeah. training that we're doing for our customer service agents in the audience here. <laughs> <laughs> 10,000 of us. Uh, all right, bye-bye now. Yeah. So cool, the new DX80. This is yeah. great uh, nice collaboration element. You know, really, we're very excited. Yep. 
Amazing innovation happening in the collaboration team right now. It's At unbelievable speeds, going back That's to right. the premise we said That's through. Right. Now, I'm going to show you another collaboration application, actually, John. And this, I've got my ruggedized iPad. So in this case, I might be a maintenance person here uh, in the, in, for, the, for the train company. Uh -huh. And I'm getting an alert that I have a problem. If I go ahead and click on that, this allows me to see that we've got a breaker panel in the tunnel that's having a breaker problem that's out. I'm going to click on Details. And this will bring us our maintenance history. And we can see that actually this, this panel's had some trouble lately. The problems are going up. So it's a panel that we've had repeat issues with. That's right. Okay. That's right. Now, before we walk into the tunnel, safety first, I want to divert the trains. So with positive train control, I can now do that it's from my mobile that, device. And that's, that's where right. you're able to reallocate allocation, um, the traffic. That's right. Easy. That's right. So okay. I'll click on OK. And we can bring up diagnostic information so we can find out, oh, there's the breaker it's at the top left there uh -huh. so let's go ahead and step into the tunnel now and okay. what we're going to do is get some help from a remote expert here so the hottest application going in telepresence and video capability from the central side out especially out of contact centers is remote expert every industry in this room every government has that requirement and tremendous efficiently efficiency when it's done right that's right so we can see that marty smith here is the last technician to work on this i can bring him in and then maybe even show him some video so that he can see what's going on. So I'm going to click on Collaborate. Uh -huh. It's going to open up a WebEx meeting. Yeah, and this is why collaboration has to have these pieces work well, relatively seamless together. That's right. OK, and we'll wait for the call to connect here. Welcome to WebEx. You will now be placed into the conference. Hey, Marty, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Hey, Good we're in here. We're here in the tunnel, and we're uh, working on the circuit breaker here. It looks like you were the last guy to work on it. Could you maybe give us some advice on how to fix this here? Yes. Yeah, sure. I caught the alert and was just checking the diagram in history, and I think I just think that the specified breaker is too small to handle the load. So, can you show me a closer view of the breaker? Sure. Yeah. Let me go ahead and bring up video. And let me uh, switch to the rear camera, and I'll start my video, and we'll see if we can. Uh... So you can okay. picture this on a manufacturing shop floor, any type of environment where any maintenance person can go out and then tie to the best experts you have. And so we're able to see it visually. What, what have you got there, That's Jim? That's the breaker there, Marty. Is that the one? That's the one. So what should now, we do? All right, look around and see if there's a spare 30 amp breaker. Oh, you, you know what? There just happens to be a spare 30 amp right here. How do you like that? <laughs> <Excellent. laughs> Amazing how that happened. <laughs> All right, you, you can install that because the breaker, the box can hold, uh, is rated for much higher. So oh, okay. try so the 30 amp breaker. It should do the job and let me know if, the, if it does. All right, Marty. Hey, listen, medium. thanks for your help. It really sped up the process of fixing it here today. My pleasure. And All remember right. me, Marty. I, I'm the man with tunnel vision. Oh, yeah. We are in a tunnel here. All <laughs> right. Thanks, here, Marty. Yes. <laughs> Grown. You want me to hold right. that for you? Yeah, if you could go ahead and okay. hold that. So I'll just go ahead and pop in the new breaker. And. Uh, Hopefully this thing is not actually live. <laughs> Let me go ahead and bring the app back up. And uh, there we go. You've got it all green. Up and running. So that's their demo for today. Talk. Jim, I got it. Just yeah. awesome. All right, thank you. Now. Tell me what role architecture is playing in this, and, well, and do the typical Indian right. we do, how it ties that's together. That's right. Well, I brought a slide with me to talk about the architectures, John. And uh, you know. There was a number of different technologies that we, and architectures that were in use to make this available today. So um, first thing that we saw, of course, and this is, I'm sorry, this chart is a little bit difficult to read, but there's a lot of things in this, in this demonstration. And so uh, first of all, let's talk about fog. So this is the ability to do processing out local uh, to close to the data that's being analyzed. Identity and unified access, the ability to have common policy and identify people and things. The mobility architecture, our collaboration architecture, we were able to interact with people. 
our data center architecture and the ACI capabilities of, of providing automated and, and software-defined capabilities. Also in the WAN, ACI in the WAN and those segments. And then cloud as we enter cloud and cloud burst to be able to get additional capability. And then, of course, security across all of this because as we begin to connect the rest of the world and the rest of the things that haven't been connected, we've got to be secure about it. Time to results and GM That's architecture brings right. it light. Right. And of course, you know what? It's all of these architectures working together that really allow us to create these new experiences around the internet of everything. Jim, I got it. Thank all you. Right. Amazing as always. Thank well you, done. John. Thank you.